Yes, uh, good afternoon students and uh, good afternoon ma'am. So this is a value added course 2024 on applications of blood stem cells in healthcare and uh, the session is about pre-hematopoietic stem cell ev uh, transplantation evaluation of recipients. So this will be delivered by Ms. Anuradha Tannan ma'am who is the senior associate partnership with uh, uh, senior associate partnerships and medical affairs in Dhatri stem cell donor registry. Um, so ma'am will deliver a, a session on uh, pre-HCT evaluation in recipients. Over to you ma'am. Thank you so much for your, your our invitation and taking this class. Yes, student. Yes, ma'am. Uh, not able to share the screen. Oh, one second, ma'am. I, I will give thanks. Okay. Yeah, now you can share. Okay. So, share the screen. Uh, all right. Uh, so, can you see this? Can you see this? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. It is visible. Yeah. Yes. We had city evaluation. Correct. Right. So this is uh, uh, now uh, we already uh, talked about uh, the HCT in pedi pediatrics. Now we'll uh, see the recipient part evaluations uh, before he or she undergoes the blood blood stem cell transplant. So this is necessary to ensure the patients are prepared physically and emotionally. And uh, this will like, you know, uh, cover the assessment protocols, risk stratification and the preparatory regimes involved in the pre-HCT evaluation of the recipient. So uh, this main, uh, uh, this includes, uh, as I already talked about, is the assessment protocols, which includes the phys uh, patients or recipients uh, physical and mental health risk stratifications, what could be the possible outcome uh, of the transplant and the preparatory arrangements. So what all preparations are required before the patient undergoes the transplant. So uh, assessment protocols, we'll begin with the assessment protocols, which includes the medical history and physical examination. We'll see why this is important. Uh, how does the medical history of the patient uh, or the recipient affects the transplant process, then the laboratory testing to ensure uh, the physical well-being of the uh, donor, uh, sorry, the patient. Uh, I may confuse with the donor or patient because mostly I talk about the donors only. So uh, uh, please um, uh, bear with me for that part. So laboratory testing we're doing to ensure the physical well-being of the uh, recipients, imaging and diagnosis, uh, uh, imaging and diagnostic studies are also done and the psychological evaluations to ensure or to find out how well the patient is prepared to, you know, face the challenges that uh, will come uh, during the, or what all could be the uncertainties during the transplant process. So uh, the assessment uh, protocols, medical history and physical examination, medical history is in like, uh, prior to the transplant or maybe even like prior to the diagnosis of the diagnosis of the disease uh, what all uh, other medical condition that the recipient has like the chronic illnesses or the previous treatment that the recipient has undergone or whether any infections uh, the recipient is suffering from any infections or not so like as i told you in case of my husband when uh, he was ready to undergo transplant, he uh, had infected lung uh, fungal infection in the lungs, and uh, he had undergone the chemotherapy sessions twice. So uh, this was this was about his uh, medical history or medic medical condition prior to the transplant, and uh, this also like you know provide the. Uh, it also helps the physicians who are going to, you know, uh, monitor the process of transplant or treat uh, the uh, patient to find out the baseline for uh, monitoring the changes during and after the transplantation. So that is why this all is required. Assessment protocol includes the laboratory testing. Laboratory testing will uh, tell uh, about the oral health condition of the recipient to the transplant physician. 
first it includes the cbc it uh, evaluates the patients uh, like uh, as you as all of you are aware it, it is basically to find out the blood cell counts uh, and the hematological health of the patient uh, then blood chemistry panel uh, it assesses the organ functions and uh, like liver and kidney functions electrolyte levels and the metabolic parameters and uh, finally we uh, uh, the patient's uh, infectious disease screening is also done mainly to find out whether the patient had has or had hepatitis hiv or uh, cmv or ebv infection so uh, normally in india all the patients uh, or everyone not for the patient everyone normally in india is cmv positive or they are cmv reactive so for the indian patient if indian donor is there and both are cmv positive or cmv re reactive then there is no issue uh, the, i mean there there will be no infection due to the cmv virus will happen during the transplant but in case if the patient is negative and the donor is positive cmv uh, reactive then uh, there is going to be uh, the issue uh, then there is going to be the issue so again uh, the uh, precautions need to be taken what all precautions need to be taken will be discussed later on but yes i mean uh, if uh, the matching is must uh, and uh, you know like mostly in case of uh, the donors or the patients outside india they are cmv negative so if the patients outside india is having an indian donor then cmv if the donor is cmv reactive or cmv positive then again the transplant physician has to take necessary care uh, at the time of transplant so uh, in case of my husband my husband was cmv reactive or cmv positive and his donor was cmv negative so again like uh, the uh, transplant physician had to take uh, necessary precautions and uh, uh, at the time of transplant so these are some of the laboratory testing that is being done apart from that the hla typing is must to find the suitable donor and uh, immunological assessment is also done to find uh, to assess the patient's immune system including t cells b cells and nk cell counts and functions so these are the number these are the laboratory testing which is a part of assessment protocols uh, other assessment protocol includes uh, the imaging and the diagnostic studies imaging includes basic x ray compute uh, ct scans and uh, echocardiography i'm sorry uh, echocardiography may be uh, performed uh, to evaluate the recipient's pulmonary and cardiac function again uh, because uh, my husband had uh, the lung infection uh, fungal infection in the lung uh, his pulmonary function uh, evaluation was must and uh, like we knew that uh, his uh, lung function capacity was compromised at the time of transplant as well so the doctor was taking the precautions accordingly and uh, the medication for fungal infection was started in well in advance before the transplant cardiac function is also necessary uh, to be monitored then bone marrow biopsies uh, are done uh, to assess the underlying disease and confirm the need for the transplantation uh, by bone marrow biopsy usually uh, is done at the time of diagnosis wherein they get to know uh, the disease uh, severity or stage and uh, uh, the exact you know uh, 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 the exact disease condition so uh, i would talk about my husband specifically he had aml and uh, we knew that aml is very risky it will definitely uh, uh come back but in some cases uh, uh, the patients without uh, have cured without bone marrow transplant also but it all depends on the severity of the disease so uh, in case of aml uh, there are no stages but 
they uh, divide the disease in risk categories low high low medium and high risk categories so depending on the mutations in the chromosome the risk category is decided my husband was in high risk category and he had m2 type aml so a transplant was must for his survival so uh, once he was when he was cured of uh, cancer after uh, chemotherapy we had no donor and uh, when while we were waiting for the donor the disease had relapsed within six months only so not even six months it was four months only so four, after four months the disease came back and my husband again had to undergo the salvage chemotherapy uh, prior uh, to the proceeding of the bone marrow transplant so that is why the bone marrow biopsies are required then psychological evaluations are must and uh, psychologist and the social worker assess the patient's mental health, emotional well-being and support system. Even if the patient is strong, the uh, surrounding support system is weak, may not help the patient. Or even if the support system is strong, but the patient at some point of time, some patients give up emotionally or mentally. And then again, uh, the treatment of such patients is challenge. Like uh, in case of my husband, when I uh, said that at the time of relapse, doctor told me that it's only 20% chance that my husband would come out of this. So uh, uh, my husband was mentally very strong at that point of time. He said that, you know, I want to leave for my family. I want our son to grow. I want to see him growing up. So that was his mental state which helped him to come out of it. So definitely uh, the patient's mental health and emotional well-being is very important at the time of transplant. And uh, this evaluation I helps in identifying any psychological stratos, uh, stress, uh, stressors or the coping challenges that may arise during the transplant journey also. Next comes is uh, the... I'm sorry, did I miss? Uh, yes. Uh, no. Uh, after assessment protocol comes as the risk stratification, that is the disease risk. So one of the primary consideration in risk stratification is the severity of the type of recipients underlying disease. So as in case of my husband, it was high risk category. And patients with high risk and advanced stage diseases may have more complex transplantation requirements and a higher risk of complications. So yes, uh, that was there with our case also. So and uh, uh, we faced lots of issues at the time of transplant as well. So definitely uh, this is must then coexisting medical conditions, that is apart from the uh, blood disorder, whether the patient is suffering from diabetes, hypertension, or cardiac disease that can uh, impact the transplantation out. So this has to be, in, uh, well, uh, the transplant physician has to be well informed about the conditions. And uh, this conditions may require optimization before the transplantation to reduce the perioperative risks. Then comes is the infection risks. So, uh, as I give you the example of CMV, the patients with the chronic history of uh, infections, particularly those active viral infections like CMV, EBV, requires antiviral therapy and careful monitoring to prevent the viral reactivation post-transplant. So, in case of my husband, already the medication for CMV uh, infection was started prior to the transfusion of the stem cells. Then donor related factors. So uh, this is also very important because the compatible and suitable donor or the cord blood unit significantly influence the risk of stratification. Uh, also, the HLA matching donor age and the presence of comorbidities in the donor must be considered. So, normally uh, at the time of transplant, 
uh, the transplant physician prefers the young donors and um, uh, preferably without any comorbidities. These days, we are having very young donors with one or the other lifestyle diseases. And uh, we have to like keep the transplant physician informed about the same. So when uh, the uh, we are doing the donor evaluation at the time of donation, we take the donor's health history as well. And we share this donor's health history with the transplant physician so that transplant physician can take care of it well in advance. Uh, after risk stratification, that is uh, risk uh, related to the viral infections and risk related to the um, uh, donor conditions are evaluated, the preparatory regimen is designed or the con it includes the conditioning regimen. So usually uh, the conditioning regimen is of five days for the patient. And even the donor uh, also starts preparing five days, uh, four days before the day of donation. So uh, this involves the condition uh, tailor. Uh, this conditioning is tailored for each and every recipient, depending on the disease, age, and the overall health. So uh, in my husband's case. Uh, this regimen includes chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or a combination of both. So for my husband, it was both. First, a high dose of chemotherapy was given for two days to ensure that even a single cell in his body should be killed or should be eradicated. Then uh, radiation for radiation, again, uh, according to his body measurements and the uh, weight, uh, the dosage of radiation was decided and he used to undergo radiation therapy twice a day. Chemotherapy first uh, for first two days, following to that, three days of radiation therapy twice a day was given to ensure none of the cancer cells or none of his blood, stems, uh, blood cells are there in his body. The goal, again, uh, as already we discussed, is to create the space for the bone marrow, space in the bone marrow for the new cells and suppress the recipient's immunity so that the new or the donor's uh, stem cells can be easily uh, accepted by the recipient's body and, of course, to eliminate the residual disease also. Uh, Someone had asked uh, during the last session how the infections are tackled with at the time of uh, the transplant. So uh, here prophylactic measures are essential and they are taken care. Uh, so as I informed in case of my husband, uh, prophylactic medicines for CMV infection as the lung infection were given. And uh, over here, antimicrobial medications may be administered to prevent bacterial, fungal, and viral infections. So all these medications are started well in advance before the preparation uh, or the trans uh, this preparation regimen starts. Then uh, uh, CME pro uh, pro prophylaxis or preemptive therapy is common. Uh, given the risk of CMV reactivation. So this is commonly given to all the patients, except where the patient and the donor both are CMV negative. Supportive care. This en encompasses nutritional support, pain management, and blood product transfusions. Blood and platelet transfusions help manage the anemia and the thrombocytopenia and common complications of the preparatory regimen. So as I give you the example of a case yesterday which came to me, since don't patient, recipients' uh, blood counts are not increasing after a certain period of time, after the donor's blood stem cells are transfused, uh, there was a requirement uh, for WBC donation for this patient. So similar was the case for my husband also. Like after 15 days of the transplant, still the blood count was not increasing. 
so doctor asked me to arrange for a wbc donor so we are we could arrange for the wbc donor but luckily uh, from the very next day the blood counts started increasing and they became very normal uh, they became normal within 10 days of time so we were lucky i mean we could did not have to have uh, that uh, donor uh, nutritional support, uh, because at the time of uh, radiation and high-dose chemotherapy, patients develop ulcers in their mouth. They are not able to eat anything. At the same time, heavy medication are going in their body. So they need to have good nutrition. So in that case, uh, many hospitals now these days, have, they have started giving the liquid diet to the donor pay recipients. Uh, this Diet is usually around, uh, depending on the weight and age of the patient, uh, and the calorie count is decided and it includes all the vitamins and other minerals and whatever like we have all in uh, fat and carbs and all uh, required for the recovery of the patient. So that liquid diet is given and once the patient's ulcers are settled, then the patient starts having uh, nutritional food slowly. So all this is very much required. Pain management is one of the major aspect because I have seen patients going through severe headaches or stomach pains or and all those things. So, of course, that also has to be taken care. Psychological support is the integral part of the pre-HCT phase. So, uh, I have seen many families uh, who are backing out from the transplant, even though they know that the transplant is the only cure for their patient. But they are backing out, fearing that transplant outcome may be negative or they may lose their loved one. So uh, psychological support is must and they have to be counseled. And once the transplant is decided, then Again, the families are counseled for the uh, probable outcome and uh, the emotional support. Uh, so that, you know, there's lots of stress. I can understand we, the patient, not only the patient, patient families are also undergoing lots of emotional stress. And because knowing that, uh, the transplant outcome may not be positive always. So it's really tough time for them to decide to go for transplant and if the transplant to, you know, uh, once if they decide to go for transplant, they have to like, you know, deal with the possible outcomes. So uh, that is also very much required. So this is all about the preparatory uh, uh, regimens also. So now, uh, can we have the questions? Uh, what is the primary goal of the pre-HCT evaluation for the recipient? You can type the option in the chat box. You don't have to write the whole thing. You can type any of the options, whatever you feel is correct. To access the recipient's knowledge about HCT, to identify the underlying medical conditions and the access the eligibility for transplantation. But one answer to B, B correct. B, right. So correct, B is the right answer. Uh, it is uh, to you know, identify the underlying medical conditions uh, and if the patient has any other pre-transplant uh, uh, pre conditions like blood pressure or diabetes and all, which may affect the transplant outcome. So uh, that is there. Next is, what is the primary goal of the pre-HCT evaluation of the recipients? Mom, it's the same question. Oh, I'm sorry. I think, oh, right, right. I'm so sorry. Uh, probably. Right. Three times I'm by mistake. I forget it. Anyways, so uh, which laboratory tests access, assesses the organ function of the pre-HCT evaluation? 
organ function blood chemistry panel cbc hla typing infectious disease screening no one the correct answer is b cbc if you go back uh, to the um, slide of uh, laboratory testing cbc evaluates uh, the uh, providing in sorry it is i'm sorry uh, a answer correct answer is a access the organ function so blood chemistry panel is done to access the uh, organ function Next is what is uh, what is the primary goal of the preparatory regimen? What is the primary goal of the preparatory regimen? To create space in bone marrow to induce an immune response to access the recipient's psychological readiness to prevent the viral infection. Anyone? Yes, see, yeah. they are going. A, okay. D. Hi, D. How, how come D? Simran, can you explain? C, okay. Hmm. Well, I'm leaving it up to you to find out the answer. I'm not going, we'll otherwise discuss it in the next session. So I'm done with the session right now. Uh, if you have any doubts, you can ask me. Now. Yes, students, any doubts students so far? Anything you want to discuss with ma'am? Um, ma'am, actually, I have one doubt, ma'am. Um, yeah. ma'am, how much government uh, um, helping in managing these things, ma'am, financially? How government nothing. Made... nothing. Oh, that's very sad, ma'am. Yes, actually, uh, government uh, we. As a registry, we don't have any support, but uh, even for the transplant also. Like, uh, but still, there is some amount which is being supported by the government nowadays. But it is very small. Like, I mean, hardly two three percent of the trans total transplant cost is support is given. That's but very less. Yeah, very less. But uh, there are some private organizations and uh, the uh, trusts, which is uh, one one of them is uh, Tata Medical Trust is supporting. Uh, a lot uh, and coal india is now giving has started giving huge amount of money even tata medical trust is also giving huge amount of money for the poor patients so they can also okay. help. and yes i mean uh there are uh, certain governments uh where uh, like in pgi chandigarh uh if the patient uh, patient is below 12 years of age and the patient has a donor within the family then the transplant cost is bared by the government, full transplant cost. I mean, almost for free, the transplant will happen. So that is there, but not at the central level. I mean, it, but now uh, this year, uh, our Prime Minister Narendra Modi has launched the Thalassemia Free India Project this year. So considering mm -hmm. we have the highest burden of thalassemia. So since all of you are medical, uh, medical lab technology students, you all of you must be aware that uh, you should get yourself screened for thalassemia. And if you all are, I mean, if you are thalassemia minor, ensure your partner is not thalassemia minor. Otherwise, there's 25% chance that your 
future generation will have thalassemia major. So please do take care of it and let us, um, uh, sorry ma'am, do they take cord donations from HIV positive donors? Uh, no, because HIV can be one of the, again, uh, major infection. So that's, that can, but now these days, uh, HIV, I have seen three cases all over the world. HIV is treated through stem cell transplant, blood stem cell transplant. So uh, for this, this can be a hope for the HIV positive patients. Ma'am, can HIV positive recipients, uh, ma'am, what is the chance of, uh, you know, immunosuppressed conditions like HIV uh, developing a blood uh, cancer, ma'am? Or can they recover? Is there any patients like that? A, uh, a recipient I, I who has a, a recipient with cancer uh, along with a HIV infection, can they able to cope up with this? Uh, 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 yes, ma'am. I oh. haven't seen I haven't uh, oh. have that uh, case in my knowledge. Yeah, ma'am. That is very extreme, ma'am. That is. Yeah. yeah, that is very extreme. I mean, um, yes, both the disease, but yes, I have seen patients recovering uh, from uh, recovering from through blood stem cell transplant, having two types of cancers simultaneously. There was oh, one patient God. along with my husband. He had ALL and AML together, and uh, touch wood, he came out of it, and he's doing well now. So it's his transplant has also, also occurred 15 years ago and he's also doing well. Like we are in touch with him also. Great, great. So, yeah. Nice. So, I mean, then, <laughs> all right. So, okay, so man, this, this HIV stem cells transplant treatment, is it done in India? Uh, no, I. it's not in India. It's outside India. This has happened. Not in India yet. It, it, okay. will, it should start soon. And uh, for the treatment of uh, thalassemia, now uh, people are experimenting on gene therapy also. So what uh, the, I don't have detailed knowledge, but like uh, what they are trying is in outside India, it is being widely used. In India, it is about to start. So uh, like they are, they modify the gene, uh, which is like, you know, which, because of which the thalassemia is, uh, the disease is there. So uh, they take out the gene, uh, they take out the cells and uh, they modify that gene. I can again, the cells are given to the patient and that's how they are treating it. And in outside India, it is becoming, uh, I mean, pe uh, patients have cu cured through this therapy. But in India, it is yet to start. Very soon it is going to start. But... Um, for HIV, no. I mean, for HIV, the stem cell transplant has not happened in India yet. All right, ma'am. I think uh, it's a very engaging uh, discussion, ma'am. And uh, ma'am, can diabetes patients donate blood? Diabetic patients. Uh, it depends on the sugar level and uh, the medications that they are taking. Not all. But like in case of uh, blood stem cell donation, we do... Uh, take uh, the blood stem cells from a diabetic patient depending on the medications they are taking. But yes, I mean, if the uh, donor is already having the insulin injections, then we ask them not to donate. But otherwise, if oral medication are taken, then depending on the dosage of medication and sugar levels, we consider them. Okay. All right, ma'am. Thank you so much. And it's only one minute left and we will meet again at uh, two o'clock, ma'am. I know this is very sure. hectic day to you, but uh, thank you so much, ma'am. We, uh, we learned a lot. Sure. Thank, yeah. you. thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. Yes. See you. See you. Yes.